Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation entitled Simple and Dynamic Modeling of Current Mode Controlled DC-DC Converters. This is the outline of this presentation. We will first see an introduction showing the typical voltage mode control. Then we will present the current mode control. We will show the DC characteristic of current mode control. We will take as an example the back converter for this. Then we will show how to obtain a simple and dynamic model of the back converter operating under current mode control. And finally, we will show an LTSPICE verification of this model. We know very well the operation of DC-DC converters and their voltage mode control. Here we have the back converter in which we are controlling the switch of the converter using a comparator as shown here. In this comparator we are comparing a reference voltage with a triangular waveform and we are generating a gate signal with a pulse width modulation. So we can control the duty cycle of the switch. Here we have the waveforms that we also know very well. We have the gate signal applied to the switch here. And here we have the current circulating through the inductor. And we know that the output voltage is the duty cycle times the input voltage when the converter operates as shown here in continuous conduction mode and the duty cycle is the ratio of the on time of the switch over the total switching period which is a value that is always between 0 and 1. So as we can see if we change the value of the duty cycle then we can control the output voltage. We can change the value of the duty cycle by changing the value of the reference voltage here apply to the comparator. However, today we are interested in controlling the back converter in current mode, which is totally different from voltage mode control. Here we are showing the circuitry that we are using to do the current mode control of the back converter. We have a clock here, which is generating pulses at the switching frequency. We have an RS flip-flop here, and then we have a comparator. So each time we have a pulse here at the output of the clock, we are going to set the RS flip-flop. So at this point here, we have a pulse from the clock and then the gate is going to be at high level. So we activate the switch and the current through the inductor is going to increase. Then using this comparator here, we are measuring the current through the inductor and comparing it with this value here, I peak. When the current through the inductor reaches this value, we are going to have a high value here at the output of the comparator and then we reset the flip-flop so the switch is going to be turned off. So we are in this situation here. At this moment here, the current through the inductor reaches the maximum value, I peak. Then the switch is off so that the current is going to decrease until the end of the period. As we are showing here, we are considering that we are operating in continuous conduction mode. So this value here is always higher than zero. And therefore, the output voltage is going to follow this expression that we have seen in voltage mode control. The output voltage is the duty cycle times the input voltage. One important point when we are using current mode control is that the duty cycle has to be in this range here. The duty cycle has to be lower than 0.5 because if we operate the converter so that the duty cycle is higher than 0.5, we are going to have an unstable behavior. We know this, we are not going to explain this in this video. Maybe we can see this in a future video, but this is not the point today. Note that here we are talking about duty cycle. This is the output voltage that we obtain using this expression here, depending on the value of the duty cycle. 
but actually the duty cycle is not a parameter that we can control directly in current mode control. In reality, what we have here in our control circuit is an input for the peak current reference, the peak value of the current through the inductor. And another parameter that we have here is the switching frequency. So we can play with these two parameters the converter is going to operate and is going to generate the corresponding duty cycle. Of course, if we measure somehow the duty cycle at which the converter is operating, then we can calculate the voltage using this expression. But because these two are our control parameters, it is also interesting to ask ourselves about the function that relates the output of voltage with the peak current and with the switching frequency. So we're going to see how to obtain this function in the next slide. To obtain this function is really easy. We have these three equations here. The output current of the converter is the voltage over the load resistance. We can also express the output current using this equation here, I peak minus 1 over 2 the peak to peak ripple of the inductor current which is shown here is this value here from this point here to this other point and we know that the peak to peak current ripple can be expressed like this the difference between input voltage and output voltage divided by the inductance times the duty cycle times the switching period and the duty cycle, because we are operating in continuous conduction mode, is equal to VO over VI. Then, using these three equations, we can obtain this final expression here, which is a second order polynomial. And solving it, we finally get this expression here. The positive solution here is not valid because it is going to give an output voltage higher than the input voltage, which we know that it's not possible for the back converter. So we have only the solution with a minus sign here. And also another condition for this expression is that, of course, the output voltage has to be lower than the input voltage, but also because of the unstable behavior, if the duty cycle is higher than 0 0.5, we have also this other condition. So the output voltage at the end has to be lower than 0 0.5 the input voltage. So we can only consider points coming from this expression that verify this condition here. So let's see an example to clarify ideas. We are showing here in blue the values of the different parameters that we have selected. The input voltage, 12 volt, the inductance, 100 microhenry, the capacitance, 10 microfarads, the load resistance, 5 ohm, and then we have selected 100 kilohertz switching frequency. So using this expression here, we can plot the output voltage versus the peak current that we are injecting here into the comparator. So we get this curve here and we know that we cannot go beyond this point which is half of the input voltage because then we are going to have unstable behavior in the current mode control. Once we know the output voltage, we can calculate, if we want, the duty cycle using this well-known expression here, the ratio between the output voltage and the input voltage. Here we can see the simulation results using LTSPICE. This is the converter. We are measuring the current through the inductor using this sensor here. And here we can see the control circuit with the clock. The reference for the peak current. We are sending here the current through the inductor that is measured at this point and then using the RS flip-flop then we generate the gate signal for the switch that we are sending to this voltage source here.
Note that some of the components that we are using in this simulation come from our Simulink compatible control library. So in order to have more information, please take a look at this video, how to create a Simulink compatible control library. And there are other three videos related to this library. So here we can see the results of the simulation. Here we have the clock signal, the gate signal here in blue, then the current through the inductor and the reference for the peak value of the current and then finally the output voltage. The reference for the peak current is 1.15 ampere. So with this value we get an output voltage, average output voltage of around 5 volts. The peak to peak current ripple is approximately 0.3 ampere, which represents 30% of the average current through the inductor, which is a typical design value. Let's see very quickly the LTSPI simulation. Here we have the circuit that we have just seen. Then we can run the simulation and here we have the results that we have just seen in the previous slide. So now we can decide, for example, to increase the current reference here. So if in the previous characteristic we select, for example, a point like this, 1.75 amperes for the peak value of the current, then the output voltage should be something like 8 volts, but we are higher than half the input voltage. So we are going to see how we have oscillations at the output and at the current through the inductor when we try to operate with a duty cycle higher than 0.5. So change here and select 1.75 and run again the simulation and then we can see how we have oscillations in the current through the inductor and also we are going to have oscillations also as shown here in the output voltage. So in the duty cycle, as we can see also, looking at the V-gate signal is not constant. Now we are going to deal with the main problem of this presentation, which is the dynamic model of the current mode control. So here we have the main waveforce again of our back converter. And if we take a look at the current through the inductor, we can say that the average current through the inductor is equal to the peak value minus half the current ripple. So usually in our designs, the peak to peak current ripple is going to be much lower than the average current through the inductor. Remember also that we are assuming continuous conduction mode operation. So a simple approximation is to say that the average current through the inductor is approximately equal to the peak value. So then we can say that the average values in time are also equal and using the Laplace function we can also say that the perturbations of the current through the inductor are going to be approximately equal to the perturbations of the peak current. So now the point is how to obtain this transfer function GC which is the relationship between the output voltage and the peak current through the inductor, which is our control parameter, as we have seen previously. To obtain this transfer function, we can go back to one of our previous videos, Power Electronics number 3, ultra-fast modeling of DC-DC converters in continuous conduction mode. And in this presentation, we obtained the back converter model, as shown here in this drawing. So now we only have to relate the output voltage with the current through the inductor. 
we can obtain this expression here that we can also write like this. So we can see how the converter behaves as a current source over the RC output network. So here we are injecting this current through the inductor into the output network. Then from this expression here, we can obtain the transfer function GC which is VO over I peak, and because I peak is approximately equal to IL, then we can obtain finally this expression for the transfer function. So we can see in that it corresponds to a first order dynamics. We have this DC gain, a zero at this frequency, and a pole at this other frequency. So we can see that the dynamics in current mode control is totally different from the dynamics in voltage mode control. Here we have a first order dynamics, while in voltage mode control we have a second order dynamics. We can see that the inductance is not in these expressions because the inductor is behaving as a current source, while in voltage mode control, both the capacitance and the inductance of the filter affect the dynamics of the converter. So now we are going to check our model with the same sample that we have seen before. Here we have selected for the series resistance of the capacitor a value of 0 0.2 ohms. So here we have the transfer function from which we have plotted the body diagrams of the transfer function GC. Here we have the magnitude and here we have the phase. These body plots have been obtained using WinPython. So if you are interested in how to do this, then you can take a look at this video, WinPython number three, frequency analysis and body plots. And now we are going to obtain the frequency response of the converter operating with current mode control by using LTS bytes. So here we have our a schematic for doing this simulation. We have placed here this voltage source, sinusoidal voltage source with the perturbation in the reference of the peak current and then we measure the output voltage. We do this for several perturbation frequencies and then processing all the data we can obtain the body plot. We have seen how to do this in a previous video. So if you are not sure about this procedure, then you can take a look at this video, LTSPICE number 6, Open Loop Frequency Response of a DC-DC Converter. So finally, we have here the comparison between the theoretical response obtained with WinPython and the response obtained using LTSPICE Simulator. So here we have the body plots that we have seen before. Here we have some of the points of these body plots. And here we have the body plot obtained using LTS bias and the same points obtained from the simulation results. So we can see that, for example, at around 100 Hz, we have 13.9 dBs and minus 1.8 degrees, which is quite similar to these values here. At 1 kilohertz, we have these two values, which are also very similar. And at 10 kilohertz, we have 2.8 dBs and minus 66.4 approximately degrees, which is also quite similar to these values here, but we can see that there is a small difference now at this uh, higher frequency. And then at 20.5 kilohertz, here we have minus 2.4 dBs, here we have minus 1.2 and minus 67 degrees and minus 73 degrees. So we can see that in general, this is not a bad approximation using this simple model. And for many applications, it can be good enough to design the closed loop operation 
of the converter. Well, this is all today in this video. I hope that you find this methodology interesting. Please let me know if you have any comment or question. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.